You know, I want to talk about one of the fundamentals of our worship when we come into the presence of the Lord, and it's something that I think makes a big difference, whether you're in church, whether you're at home, uh, in your own prayer time. And that is one of the aspects of lifting our hands to the Lord. There's something really powerful that happens when we do that, and I like to mention it every now and then because I know we have a lot of new people who've come in, and you see people lifting their hands, and you're like, well, they, they didn't do that at the church where I was at, or only that person did it at the church you came from, and, and you just don't really understand. And that's okay, because until you understand the scripture, then, then you, you would maybe think it's just a personal preference. But it's not a personal preference. It's a powerful principle spiritually that can revolutionize your life. And I'm not going to take long with it because I would rather that I explain the principle than we put it into practice. But I want you to see, because some of you are thinking, oh no, now he's going to be asking me to raise my hands. And what I'm, what I'm asking you to do right now is to just listen to the scriptural principle. Because after you hear what the scripture says, then you can go from there in, uh, in practice. Because whatever the Bible, it doesn't matter what our church background is, what our tradition is. What matters is what does the Bible say and are we true to the Bible? So you, you read in the, in the scripture and there's a very interesting story in the book of Exodus. And it's, it's as the nation of Israel's come out of Egypt and Moses is leading them. And they've, they've not been out of Egypt very long. They've crossed the Red Sea. And it says the Malachites, these are ancient enemies of the nation of Israel. They came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I'll stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. Why the staff of God? Because remember, when he lifts the staff of God, all of the plagues happened in Egypt. When he lifts the staff of God, the Red Sea parts. So it's same as saying, listen, I'm going to do everything I can to spiritually support you in the battle. So you can have all the good armies you want. You can have all the well-trained warriors you want. You can, be, you can be ready for battle. You can say, you know what, I'm smart enough. I've studied enough. I've worked hard enough. But listen, there's a spiritual component to life, and you can't escape that. There's a spiritual dynamic. And you can try to win in human effort, or you can try to win by the power of the Lord and by applying spiritual principles. Here's Moses, and he says, I'm going to have the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. And as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. It's a very interesting story. He lifts his hands, Israel wins. He drops his hands, the Amalekites win. Even though Joshua has fighting men, even though they know God is with them, even though God has led them out of Egypt, even though they're eating manna every morning, unless Moses holds his hands up in the air, the enemy wins. So what kind of battle is this? Is it a physical battle? Yes. Are they using weapons physical, uh, physically that are involved in warfare? Yes. Do they have to be strong and trained in the use of those? Yes. But unless, unless Moses lifts his hands, they're not going to win, which tells you it's a spiritual battle. It's a supernatural battle. And what this is telling us is all of our battles have a supernatural element to it. So you may have come in here tonight and you're facing a big battle, or you may be in here tonight and you're facing a, you're facing a challenge, but you're saying it's all going to work out. I feel good about it. Can I just tell you that even if you feel good about it, even if you think you should be able to, to come out on top on that, you're going to need God's spiritual, supernatural help. Here's the moral of the story. They get to the end of it. They win the battle. Moses' hands grew tired, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, and Aaron and Hur held his hands up. So Moses finally gets so tired of having his hands in the air that they realize we've got to keep his hands in the air. So they're holding his hands in the air. 
And Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. And then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and he called it, the Lord is my banner. In other words, the Lord is over me. The Lord is my banner, for hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. So what he's saying is, I lifted up my hands to God, and as a result of that, the battle was won. There's something, this, we're not talking Pentecostal culture. We're not talking a stylistic thing. Oh, we stylistically like people to lift their hands. No, we're talking about a supernatural thing. We're talking about a spiritual thing. We're talking about something that has a profound impact anytime we do it in the presence of the Lord or do it unto the Lord. Listen, when you come in here, when Randall and Izzy and the team, when they get up here and they say, let's lift our hands, listen, they're calling you to battle. They're saying, God wants to do something in this place. And if we don't lift our hands to the Lord, we're not going to win the battle. I mean, this is what Scripture's teaching. And I mean, this isn't the first time Moses has lifted his hands to the Lord. In Exodus 9 and 29, Moses said to Pharaoh, as soon as I've gone out of the city, I'll stretch out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease and there will be no more hail. So now Moses is praying. And what does he do? He lifts his hands to the Lord. God, please cause the thunder to stop. He lifts his hands. In Exodus 9 and verse 33, so Moses went out from the city, stretched out his hands to the Lord, and the thunder and the hail ceased. Now listen, you see this principle all over scripture, and I'm just gonna quickly give you some verses. Second Chronicles chapter six. Here's Solomon, and he lifts his hands toward the temple. He's on his knees, and he knelt on his knees in the presence of the assembly of Israel, spread out his hands toward heaven, and he said, oh Lord God of Israel. So he prays his prayer, and when he gets done, hands lifted up to the air, what happens? Fire comes out of heaven and consumes the sacrifice. Very, very interesting. He's got his hands in the air and God answers with fire. You come to 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 1. Here it says, as soon as Solomon finished his prayer, fire came down from heaven and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. What is it that you and I want? We want to see, we want to see the fire of God fall on this place. People fill with the spirit like never before. We want to see the glory of God in this place like never before. In Ezra chapter nine and verse five, at the evening sacrifice, I rose from my fasting with my garment, my cloak torn and fell upon my knees and I spread out my hands. So here's Ezra, he needs God to help them. He needs God to protect them. He needs God to go before them. He needs God to touch the people and to change the people's hearts. So what does he do? He lifts his hands in prayer. You say, all oh, that's Old Testament. Here's what Paul says, first Timothy. I desire then that in every place men should pray lifting holy hands. Who are we praying for there? What's Paul talking about? Praying for leaders, those in authority. So listen, you know, our leaders, our national leaders, our state leaders, our local leaders, they need the hand of, they need the, hand of the Lord on their life. So Paul, what does he prescribe? He says, I want everybody to lift their hands and pray for these people. Because there's a spiritual battle that's happening. And as we lift our hands, what happens is we're praising God and we're preparing the way for God to work in our lives and in the battle we face and in the church and in all kinds of ways. Psalm 63, verse four. I will praise you as long as I live and in your name, I'll lift up my hands. Listen, you're doing it as unto the Lord. You're saying, Lord, I'm lifting my hands to you. I'm, I'm lifting this. So, you know, there's some of you and you say, you know, I don't sing because I can't sing, which I think is a mistake because honestly, uh, this is not The Voice or American Idol. This is church. And the Bible says sing. And, and you say, well, I, I can't carry a tune. Try it anyway. It's good for us to vocalize praise to the Lord. But that's not all there is, that it's good for us to lift our hands to the Lord. Just in lifting our hands to the Lord, we're honoring the Lord, we're praising the Lord as we're praising Him, powerful things happen. In Psalm chapter 89, 
or 88 and verse 90, each day I beg for your help, Lord, oh Lord. I lift my hands to you for mercy, God. I just have to have your help right now. I need you to go before me. I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me. I need you to help me. It's part of just seeking the Lord. In Psalm 134, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Listen, you're blessing the Lord. You're praising the Lord. If, if you just came in and went like this, in his presence, acknowledging him, you're honoring the Lord. You're blessing the Lord and powerful things happen. Listen, all I'm saying is don't let, you know, sometimes here's, here's a mistake. And, and I'm going to suggest to you that the enemy's having his way with you. You come in and you say, nobody's going to tell me when to lift my hands. What you're saying is, I don't want to be led by worship leaders. And I don't want to be led by spiritual leaders. I want to do what I want to do. And I'll lift my hands when I want to lift. You, do you know what I'm saying? There's a, a stubbornness to that that is hard for God to bless. Listen, you know, when the worship leader says, lift their hands, they're, they're leading us into the presence of the Lord. If a, if a pastor says, lift their hands, it's because in that moment, the Spirit of God is compelling them or motivating them or prompting them to do that. I just, you know, I don't get up and say, now when I get up, I'm going to tell them to lift up their hands. I might, now tonight I will. But a lot of times if I do it, it's just, it's a prompting. You just, you do it. You just say it because you know that it'll make a difference. And there's some of you and you've never done it before. And listen, the, I've left the lights down because I think it's, I think it's helpful at times. It gets, it gets your attention off the people around you. So nobody's seeing you. So just as we're in the presence of the Lord, you just wanna lift your hands. You just wanna say, Lord. And here's what you'll find. As you're obedient to the scripture and, you're, and you're, your actions line up with God's word, what you'll experience is God's blessing. And as you start to pray like the Bible prescribes, you'll begin to sense a power like the Bible talks about. And that's what we want in the presence of the Lord, isn't it? You know, you don't want to miss a blessing from the Lord. And you know, victories aren't automatic. Sometimes, sometimes victories don't come unless we really apply the spiritual pressure we need to apply. So there's some of you tonight, and, and uh, I mean, there's, the needs are as varied as the people that are in here, but there's some of you and you're battling fear. There's some of you, you're battling anxiety. There's some of you and you're battling, you're battling doubt. There's some of you, you're battling at work. You're, you've got financial battles, relational battles, I mean, physical battles. And I'm just saying, whatever your battle is, one of the great weapons is to lift your hands to the Lord. Not only as you're lifting up to honor Him, but as you're lifting up to receive from Him. Not only as you're honoring uh, or as you're lifting your hands up to seek Him, but you're lifting your hands up to surrender to Him. Because hands lifted up is an international sign of what? Surrender. God, I surrender myself, my circumstances, my situation, my future, my life to you. All of those things and more. But when God sees that, God says, hands were lifted up to the Lord. Hands, they're, they're lifting their hands to me. And, and watch the spiritual momentum change in your life. That's what Moses found Hands lifted up, spiritual momentum. Hands down, lack of spiritual momentum. Hands up, it's not the end all be all. I'm just saying it's a very, very interesting principle in scripture. And you see a lot of godly men with power and women with power, they pray and God works. So right now, I don't know what you need from the Lord, but whatever you need, would you step into the altar? Just step out of your seat. You need something from the Lord, you've come to seek him. And we're going to have you lift your hands in the altar. So when you come, I'm just, I'm, I'm asking you to come prepared to do that. Maybe for some of you, it'd be the very first time you've ever done it. 
Nobody's going to be watching you because, honestly, everybody's going to be seeking the Lord for what they need from the Lord and what they want to see the Lord do and the way they want to see the Lord work. And so what I want you to do is I'm going to pray for you in just a moment, but then you're just going to, you're going to worship the Lord with your hands up. You're going to seek the Lord with your hands up. I mean, hey, your hands get tired, put them down. I mean, I, the Lord understands, but as much as you can, for as long as you can to say, Lord, I want to receive from you.